Zimmy's prayers, a cosmic parallelism. The book of life is your life, your presence to us and among us, an eternal thing. Yours is the only life of meaning in all the universe. All things are of you. To us you bring to being existence, and why? It is that we will give you glory in our service and obedience. Neither have we done well. But all this is foreknown and determined by you. You are a being of resurrection. That is, a cosmic parallelism, like unto Hebrew poetry, in the which all life is doubled unto new life, the chaos of creation into order. Atoms fall unto the life of Jesus, second Adam, and many other things. Chiefly this, we are to die in our body here on earth, but given another, a glorified body, fitted for heavenly life. Even before this blessed joining, the Spirit of God replaces our spirit with a new spirit of life. It is this which travels before us into your presence and is later joined to its body and to the whole body of the communion of saints. It is a perfect plan, not well recognized. This is because there is great mystery involved. Neither of the, nothing of this shall have come to pass, but that Jesus came down to and among us, the second Adam, to bring to new life all who were to be brought to your life. We were created perfectly able to do what was required of us, upright in your image, in purity, innocence, righteousness, and holiness. We were taken from all these by an evil presence, this all to the ultimate betterment of the whole human race and of your glory, the resurrected life of heaven. The rule by which we lived was implanted in our nature and written in our heart by creation, in covenant with you, sacramentally typified by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This covenant was broken unto all of us by Adam, federally. Our nature is corrupted and all the power to do good utterly lost. Toward the restoration of the life of earth, two things. Peculiarly toward your church, in our generations all things are readied and accomplished. Secondly, toward all in a general manner, yet with various and multi-differentiated means and meanings. Ultimately, they serve the devil unto your purposes and glory, and are the foil against which our life is thrust. You cause all things to work together for our good, your elect, your church. You rule and dispose of all governments, kingdoms, and persons for our benefit. Lastly, do you, you do avenge us of our adversaries. This a public display of and before all persons who have ever lived. You rule also over the sinful actions of wicked men. You willingly and according to your determinate counsel suffer them to be as they are. This for the manifestation of your glory in judgment, in mercy, and by them effect your own righteous ends. This said providence of yours extends itself to every small thing, the least grass of the field, hair of our heads, or worm of the earth, is not exempted from your knowledge and care. The law given us first to fulfill was written with the finger of God in the two tables of stone on Mount Horeb, the observation of this law, these Ten Commandments, is still required of us. This we are not able to perform. The law is spiritual, but we are carnal. The law, when first given, was able to be kept by us, since lost in Adam. The law yet serves to be a rule of our duty or to discover to us the obedience required by you. Secondly, to drive us unto Christ our Savior. We are shown the utter disability of our nature to do anything good. Also, your wrath and curse due to sin is put upon our conscience. 
Thirdly, by bringing the whole soul under bondage to sin, death, Satan, and hell, so making us long and seek for you, our Savior, now found. Amen.